Scott Hensler Network. Nothing good comes out of it, and nothing good comes out of anything after 12 o'clock. And if anything after 12 o'clock in a woodshed, you can definitely make sure that nothing good comes out of that. Well, I'm Scott Hensler. We're going to be with Julie Flores a little later. Gang stalking. What in the world is that? Well, I'm dealing with several cases, several people that um, have called me with heartache and pain and and just... Uh, it's a slew of, of issues and problems that have come from this particular talk, topic. Now, the the thing about gang stalking is it can it can vary from those things in high school all the way to programs uh, in the CIA. And we're going to touch on this tonight. We're going to spend the first hour or so uh, going over this subject, and then there's some other things that Julie wanted to bring up. And and so the the point of it is, is we want to appeal to those who are listening to this that are experiencing these issues where you go home and something has entered the home, somebody, something, things are rearranged, things are uh, have the appearance of being stolen but are not. Uh, you may lose pets. You may have dead animals that have been placed in front of your home, in your home, in your car. You may be harassed at work up through electronic means. You may actually have drones that follow you around. You may have people that follow you in cars. You may have people who call you. And you may have entities, shadow people type things, hybrids, uh, reptilian type creatures, that harass you as well, and, and anyone that is normal uh, would just absolutely think that they're going insane by dealing and seeing with with things like that. But when you you know look at the evidence that the the probability or the 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 possibility of something like that happening is very slim, and so so when it does, then you have to take a look at it and say what what is going on here. And when it keeps going, it keeps going, and it keeps going. Now, you can have curses on your life where everything goes wrong. Cars always break down. Uh, your relationships, your marriages fall apart. You've been married three, four times, five times. Uh, your kids whack out on you. All kinds of issues like that. Now, when when you have something that constantly uh, upsets your spirit, okay, so... At any moment, the other shoe is going to drop. Okay, that can cause post-traumatic stress. Those who are in a relationship with with people that are of personality disorders, and you never know what's going to come out of them. Every moment, every day, every hour is different. Uh, that can cause post-traumatic stress. Those who are in war situations never know when the bullet's going to come. Never know when the bomb's going to come and may be subject to gunfire and explosions around the clock and and witnessing their buddies, their friends, and even themselves uh, experience you know horrific injuries. This can cause post-traumatic stress. Now, I've always said that post-traumatic stress is a devil's playground. So I can assure you when it comes to gang stalking that Satan is in the details of this. Now, let's just look at high school, okay? We have bullying, all right? That That's an issue. There's no question about that. We have, and it can come from girls. Uh, girls can bully another girl, and we now have a high suicide rate from this situation. So, uh, and that's even been an issue uh, in my family back when my kids were growing up of gangs. 
uh, being led by one individual, uh, a girl, that had the ability, like a Jezebel, to control the boys. And the boys would do anything she wanted, including beating up other students. So we see this a lot. Now, then we go to organized crime. Then you have somebody that has done something to the cartel, to to the mob, to something along that lines. And instead of there being a hit, there is gang stalking. There is a constant harassment. Now, this, this harassment, again, can vary from, from dead animals to phone calls to hacking in computers to theft, you know, uh, out of banks. And... Even even death of spouses, even uh, kidnapping of your children, or or some type of violent action against your family. So that can be that one aspect. But what we're talking about tonight is uh, a MK Ultra, a a psychological warfare against the citizens. And most likely these individuals somewhere along the line have stepped on the toes of somebody in the Council on Foreign Relations, the globalists, uh, congressmen, those in the military, those uh, that are in in corporate uh, situations like uh, General Electric and, and some of these bigger corporations. And so what happens then once they've done something like, and I say step on the toes, let me define it. All right, let's, let's say that you've witnessed something. Let's say you're an accountant. Uh, you're in sales or you're in some uh, VIP situation in a, in, a, in a company and you see the dirty, underhanded uh, tactics. And maybe you saw something that was never meant for your eyes and now you're a risk to them. So you then maybe turn them in you try and get evidence to turn them in, and they know this. And and maybe to some degree you've been successful. And now your life is hell. You've moved away. You've gotten out of the state. Things happen all the time so much that it's obvious that your phone, your computer has been hacked. There may be even even electronic devices such as cameras in your home and in your car that see and know everything that you're doing. So when you leave the house, then immediately there's this entourage of of others that are following you, running into you, um, causing you to to do things you wouldn't normally do because of fear. Now, you think, well, where are they going to get these people? Well, a lot of them uh, are, are just criminals, that have been released from prison, that are facing some type of long-term penalty, but in order to avoid that and to stay outside the, uh, the, the bars, they're willing to do anything. Some of them are actually programmed, like satanic ritually abused or under an MK Ultra mind control. And so that's a twofold purpose. And what do I mean? Well, one, the individual that they wanted to harass is being harassed. The other is now you're able to use a test bed of programmed individuals to see if they will do what you wanted them to do. Will they carry out the task? Will they kill an animal? Will they kidnap a child? Will they rape somebody? See? And so, again, this is a a social engineering uh, a, 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 a psychological warfare against the citizens of the United States. Now, this takes place in Canada, too. And and Julie, I think, is going to bring out some information that this can even be taking place down in Mexico. So what is the, the purpose of, of all this? Well, um, you know, I'd like to think of myself as somewhat normal. Um, so I have a hard time coming to any terms why anybody would think that this is okay. But we have to remember that the uh, so-called elite, those who uh, are running this country, those who are going to invade us with ISIS south of the border, Spesnaz troops uh, north uh, on the Canadian border, 
uh, and even uh, boots on the ground here in the United States. There's well over 100,000. This has been established for a long time. I've even noticed here in Coeur d'Alene uh, that there's a high amount of Asians all of a sudden showing up, which look much like possibly they're the wives or family members of soldiers. Uh, I, I noted on my website about a year ago that I posted uh, a phoenix bird that was found in the um, Kootenai Mountains around here uh, that indicated that there was troop movement or that there was an establishment of troops. So our, our area has already been... Uh, surveyed. And and so when we see this situation taking place in the United States, anything goes. See, we've already gone past the point of no return. If anybody hasn't realized that, uh, you've been listening to CNN, you've been listening to Fox News, you've been listening to, uh, to NPR radio, all right? Well, you need to turn that junk off because it's nothing more than propaganda. Now, the, the psychological warfare, the electronic means to program you is through TV and radio, through any other means. And, and, and right now with, with the Internet, see, they're going after the Internet because right now that's our only communication for me to tell you what's going on uh, and for you to do your own research. And when that stops, you're at the complete mercy of these gangsters, these thugs, these um, you know, these low lives, because these people have absolutely no love of man in them. They are narcissists. They are they are um, uh, they they are they are capable of inflicting harm onto humans, animals, whatever, and children, because they don't care. So when when we look at and by the way, Friday. Uh, I'm going to be uh, bringing up a lot more information on human trafficking and uh, ritual abuse uh, involving the Queen of England, involving uh, the Bushes, involving uh, those that we at one time thought were were Christians, those who, who portrayed themselves, who came in uh, as wolves in sheep's clothing to lie to the masses in order to put them in a position that we trusted them, and then a 9-11 one came along. And, and so, again, we've got to a point where nothing surprises me anymore. In fact, um, before I go too much further, I wanted to bring up that um, I had pointed out uh, about a video that was on uh, Facebook, and then I reposted it about a, a, a young girl, a young woman, who was um, very high on drugs, and who knows what it was. It could have been a combination, but she was completely, you know, um, out of it. But the thing of it is, is that those who are in the deliverance ministry, those who deal with demons, can immediately pick out that there are manifestations that take place with this girl. I'm not talking about the girl that was on the uh, subway. This is another one where she was on a sidewalk and somebody was using a cell phone to, to capture it. And, and it is so sad because um, she's so high on drugs that, that very much it's like hypnosis. When, when you are no, no longer uh, in control of your cognitive thinking, when, when you are in a state that you have a door open, that's when the demons can come in. This is why nightmares can take place during REM, when you are in a deep sleep. Uh, because there's a point where you're in a state of vulnerability, and that and that's just a, just a case because there are others. But the point is, is that this young woman, as she manifests, uh, I call them looky looks. The the demon comes up, the demon goes down, and it isn't just one of them; it's several of them. Speaks in a very strange uh, dialect or tongue, and the what when you do hear any english statements it's very profound in that it is making statements that is of something of authority or thinks it has authority so the the point of it is is to anyone else who doesn't do deliverance or sees demons all day long and that's you know i mean you know that's what i do so so as americans we we when we meet somebody they go so what do you do because that's who you are right 
And and so, like, if I go to a public setting and it's a singles event or a church event or something like that, and and I want to know immediately if this individual that I've met is even going to be nice to me, I'll tell them right away what I do. And that goes over like, you know what, in a punch bowl. And immediately they walk away or they, they look at me weird or they pull the old, you know, Christians can't have demons garbage. And so end of conversation. So this is what I do. It's what I've done for a long time, and, and it's what I've been called to do, and I will continue to do this. I can't imagine doing anything else. There was a time when I was in law enforcement that I thought that I couldn't imagine doing anything else. When I was doing man tracking and search and rescue, I thought that there, you know, I would never do anything else. But the, the days are short. And, and so as we've been commanded through Jesus Christ in the Great Commission, Matthew 28, that we're to go out and and to cast out demons, heal the sick, set the captives free, bind up the brokenhearted, and and so so by doing what I'm doing and doing it for so long that when I see the video of this girl, it is obvious what's going on here. And and I bring this up because there were some comments trying to say, oh, she's just on drugs. No, she's not just on drugs. She's at a point of no return. At that point in time, a complete possession. Okay, it doesn't mean she can't be redeemed, but the likelihood of her being delivered is very slim because the gutless church, and and, and by the way, uh, I, I'm going to be bringing up a church here pretty soon that I'm going to slam. I told you I would do every one of them because I'm sick and tired of lies. I'm sick and tired of seeing people hurt and wounded. I'm sick and tired of seeing what we were called to do as Christians uh, being being quenched. We're grieving the Holy Spirit, people. We've been given all power and authority over the wiles of the enemy. And by God, we better do it. Because your children, your grandchildren, your loved ones are being slaughtered. They're getting their rear ends kicked. And, and I just got some news a little bit ago about an individual. I won't go into too much detail. But it has to do with a child uh, having nightmares. And now the child is becoming violent. And the, the, the parent has yet to bring the child to me. And uh, so there's a point in time where you need to cowboy up, cowgirl up, buckle up, take care of business, and move forward. Because the time is short, and the demons want your children. The demons want this girl that was on the sidewalk, and they have her. And since the church isn't doing what they're supposed to do, She's not going to most likely be delivered. Now, that's why I mentioned in my posting on Facebook to pray for her. Because God will intervene, okay, corporately. When people get together and actually do what they've been called to do, God will work, okay? So this poor woman, I can guarantee you, she has wolf spirits. I can guarantee you she has bat wing type creatures that come to her and terrify her. Um, most likely she's already multiple personality because she's been traumatized so much. And and so this video is a is a, a prime example of of that situation. So so God bless that that girl. She's just you know who knows what happened to her when she was young and she's just simply trying to kill the pain and and uh, and of course that's when the devil slips in. And, and does what he does best, and that's to lie, steal, kill, destroy. And, uh, and so eventually, if this girl doesn't get help, um, uh, that's, that's most likely the case. All right, so back to uh, this, uh, uh, the, the gang stalking. I know that, um, that many of you that have called me that have had concerns, there's a, a common thread or a, a pattern. And, and again, I wanted to mention that it's because you violated somebody or you they're, at least they think they did. And when I say violate, what I mean is, is you shouted from the rooftops their sins. Okay? We look at Luke 12, 3. Those, that aren't, those things in darkness will be eventually brought to the light. And so you did what you, were, what you felt was in your heart to do, and it may have to do with, with a spouse that's now dead, who witnessed something, and because you're, you know, the 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 spouse, you're being harassed. 
Now, what does harassment mean? Now, harassment means to go out of your way, to to come to somebody and victimize them, to to use verbal, physical means to intimidate, to cause someone to stand down, to back off, to be in fear, to traumatize, to cause anxieties, and to cause them to do what they would never normally do, and sometimes that's suicide. And and by the way, that is actually the ultimate goal, is is for you to end, end your life because of the pain and suffering that you're going through because of this torment. So so the, the reason that I felt led to bring this this up, and and Julia was actually the one that first brought this up, but but I can see that just it's just finally time. To, you know, we we've touched on it, but but the thing that it is, it's increasing. And and many of you that that listen to my shows, I I think I've already you know ministered to quite a few of you. And and the thing of it is, is just remember what's going on. Be still and know that God is God. He will avenge. Okay, the people who are doing this, just as I mentioned about those who harass widows, those who steal money from them, and and those who abuse orphans. Uh, there's a big hammer coming. Okay, and this is one of the reasons that God wants us to pray for our enemies, because when the judgment finally comes, um, it, it'll be beyond the comprehension of of many of us to understand the physical, emotional torment that will be brought upon these people. Now, anyone that uh, ends up in hell needs to remember that eternity is a very long time. Uh, if anyone's familiar with the the uh, sign infinity uh, in electronics, we used it in the ohms measuring to show that it was from a point of high resistance to infinity. There, it just it was infinite. It didn't stop uh, to to a point of of it being a a insulator. And and so when when you understand what can take place to these individuals that are doing these horrendous, heinous crimes against you, against children, against teenagers, that when judgment comes, every knee will bend, every head will bow. Believe me. There are those in Revelations who call for the mountains to, to fall upon them. There were those who seek death and not find it for five months. Okay, so this is what's going to happen to these people. So what I want you to do is I want you to thank God for who he is. I want you to praise him, thank Jesus for what he did on the cross, and forgive these people. And by doing so, the Holy Spirit then can move in and set up uh, a, a... a, a protection that is angelic, protection that is uh, supernatural, protection that exceeds anything that could be a physical protection. And, and some of you have already experienced that. So what happens when it reverses onto an individual? Okay. Now, we've seen this before in the deliverance ministry where those who who went out of their way to harm other people, okay? Otherwise, we've had people come into the deliverance ministry that were the ones actually going after other people. Now, I've had people come after me. And one of them who did a, a terrible um damage to me years ago, had a stroke. Another individual said I would never work in Phoenix again, died last year. Okay. And I can assure you that their their mental torment prior to this and, and after um, is beyond any, what most of us could ever deal with. Never go after anybody. Do not pay evil for evil. Do not do things against a fellow Christian. Do not do it. Because that means 
that the demons that you have unleashed, and we just look at Jezebel, by the way, when we look in Kings, we see that it was prophesied how she would die. And sure enough, she was thrown off the tower. Uh, the, the chariot rolled over her, and the dogs came and ate her up except for her hands. Okay, what a way to go. But when you have mental torment before death, you will have demons. Now, who else did this? Um, we have uh, situations all through the Bible where people went insane. We have um, those that, that were cursed and ate grass. We had those that committed suicide. Judas, for, for instance. And, and so this mental torment is because of demons. So when you do something against another Christian, you have violated one of the main laws of God, especially if you come against somebody who is called and is anointed and is doing what they're supposed to do, and, and for some reason you think you've been called to, to change the situation. You will be removed. And and there will be a, a price to pay. We we see where where those were called to be turned over to the tormentor, which is the demons, for a time, and in hopes that their soul would be saved. Okay, which means in time hopefully they repent and and come out of their sins and come back into a life that is worthy, that is just, that is honoring to the most high God, the God of the Bible. Because any other means is in cooperation with demons. So when you get mad at somebody, and and I have to bite my tongue too. I'm not perfect. I, you know, believe me, uh, this ministry is not an easy ministry. Um, you know, I, I deal with things much like everyone else, and I have to remind myself constantly of who I am, what I'm doing. And then I have to to dot my eyes and cross my T's and watch my tongue, and because every demon that I've ever kicked out of you people, if any of them have ever returned, I send them to the pit. I don't care what anyone else says. That's what we're to do. That there may be a case or two where some of those sons of guns come back, and now I'm being stalked myself. Okay, so I got to watch what I do. And and you've got to watch it too. So when when anyone that goes against an innocent individual, and let me just use an example of single women who who have um, been divorced, uh, their husbands ran off, or whatever the situation was, or the, or even widows that their husbands died. And I'm I'm saying women because it seems like the majority of those who are gang stalked are women. So now you have a woman who is um, trying to serve God, is obedient, is in the Word, and she's being terrorized. Okay. Now, this means that the woman is innocent and that there's a point in time. Now, and, and let me cover one more thing here. We have all power and all authority over demons. Okay. But we do not have power and authority over humans. So what the demons do, whether it's through satanic ritual abuse, whether it's through psychotronic uh, application to cause mind control, or through drugs, or through, through uh, shock therapy, or whatever they do, then the demons use the individual's will, much like a robot, and those people then move forward with their behavior to cause what they're doing to other people. And so now you're praying and you're doing the best you can with what you know to do. The church is worthless to you. You already know that. And, and so you end up calling me and some others. Well, what, what's going on here is not only are you dealing with demons, but you're dealing with an individual that has a free choice, a free will. And, and so this is where it, we rely on backing off, surrendering it to the Lord, still taking authority over the demons that are in them, but turning these people over to the Holy Spirit and forgiving them. 
okay, which is hard to do. But that is what we're called to do, and this is why we're called to do it. Because you're, and, and I want to bring up that hybrids, grays, reptilians, Nephilim, okay, that's what we're going to have to do in the end times. We, we can fight against the spirits that are in them or the controllers on the outside of them. I talk about that in Second Heaven Invasion, the last chapters. But we're also going to have to deal with the entities themselves with their own free will. And that's when the Holy Spirit, when you surrender and, and are in Christ. Okay, No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, no guarantees about anything. Right? I can't guarantee that you're going to survive what's coming. I can't guarantee that I'll survive. In fact, I'm, I consider myself a high target. I'm expecting the men in black someday or some crazy weird you know, uh, uh, creature that uh, goes around gnawing heads. I don't know. But whatever it is, um, you know, God's in control, and I will be still and know that he is God. And if he wants me to spend my days doing what I'm doing, then that's what I'm going to do. And you need to have the peace in your heart to know that it's no mistake that you're alive in these last days. And that means that there's a job to do. That means that there is an assignment. That means that there is a divine guidance that God has for us. We could have been born 100 years ago. Our spirit. God is the father of spirits. Okay? That's why abortion is so, so wrong. It is murder. It's remove. See, now think about this. It's removing those that would have been here for the last days. Okay? Can you wrap your mind around that? Those who were Christians, those who would have been the warriors, those who would have been the ones that God called forth to make a change, to make a difference, to save others, to bring testimony and salvation to others are now gone. Do you see what's happening here? And so when we look at the big picture, we realize that demonic with humans and the control of Satan and how he's bringing in the beast system is how everything is coming to an end. And that means that the amount of manifestations the, the amount of, of gang stalkings, the, the amount of, of those things that we see on Facebook and posted on YouTube for manifestations are going to heavily increase. In fact, we're, we're seeing it already. I've talked about that. But we're, what we're also seeing is that there's shape-shifting. There's, there's this, this shape, this ability to shift from one form to another, Canada has it, United States has it, Mexico has it, and, and Julie will probably talk about that. And what what we're seeing, okay, because there's two things here. One, it's a it's the demons within an individual when a possession takes place, okay. The other is that it's a reptilian or some type of hybrid that is unable to hold its form and loses it for a moment. Now, it may, maybe God's revealing them, so you see who you're dealing with. Okay, But remember, 2 Timothy 1.7, we have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Okay, Now, one, one thing that, that I will tell you that you know the Holy Spirit is working, that when you run into a situation like that, regardless of the chaos, regardless of the insanity, there's a quiet stillness in your spirit. Okay? You can clearly think. You clearly know what to do. Whether it's to stand down, whether it's to do something, you know because the calmness and the stillness of the Holy Spirit is directing you what to do. Now, in the end times, in Revelation, we, we will be told what to do. We'll be, bef we'll be brought before the councils. We'll be, uh, we'll be accused of things. We'll be, and, and we're told not to worry about what we're going to say, that the Holy Spirit will tell us what, what to say. And, and by the way, that's a great deal of what deliverance is all about. When you're really in the Spirit and you're doing a deliverance and you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a demon, 
I don't care what formula. I don't care who you learn from. When you back off and allow God to work through you, he'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you what to say. He'll tell you what curse to break. He'll tell you what demon to throw out. And it's it's wonderful. Because the end result is the individual you're working with is set free. And so I say that to say this, that those who are being gang stalked, those who are in situations, be still and know that God is God. Okay? If you are a widow, you will be avenged. If you are a single woman, you will be avenged. Okay? If you are someone that is um, trying to better themselves, that may be um, not quite a Christian, well, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you to commit suicide. So you then lose your salvation or never gained it in the first place. Okay? Uh, the term lose. Uh, no one loses their salvation. You forfeit it. Okay? We can talk about that another time. And I don't really care what anyone else thinks. Because by any of the means of telling people otherwise, you're giving those who think that suicide is a way out an okay to do it. And that's wrong. Because, again, you're alive in these last days for a reason. And Satan is doing everything he can through his minions, through his thugs, to eliminate you. He wants to hurt you. He wants to inflict pain upon you. He wants to demonize you. He wants to send demonized people to you. He wants to gang stalk you. Okay? So don't fall for it. Just remember that at any time that you can go into prayer, and if you have your prayer language, remember <clears throat> that when you start praying in tongues, you are talking directly to God. This is a heavenly language that has been given to you to communicate to God directly. And what takes place in the spirit realm is incredible. Okay, Angels come to your aid. Ministering spirits come to your aid. Demons don't know what you're saying, and they freak out. And I've had them yell at me saying, stop it, we don't know what you're saying. And then, you know what, that's tough. Now, one of the things I, I talk about with praying in tongues that uh, I, I make the connection with, with felines, cats, that even when a cat is in trouble, a cat is nervous, a cat is in, is in uh, distress, they'll purr. And they'll purr because it's a familiar way or a familiar um, action to cause a peace within them. And so I kind of equate that to, to praying in tongues. We're purring. We're allowing our spirit to settle. We're allowing ourselves to be still and know that he is God. That's all we're trying to do on this show, people. We're not trying to give you another doctrine. We're trying to get you back in relationships. So no matter what is thrown at you, you can be still and know that he is God. See, that's what it's all about. Now, again, I can't guarantee that anybody will will um, survive what's coming. I mean, we know that there's going to be a great deal of death. And, we, and I've mentioned before that um, the amount of demons that will be released because of the masses of the people who will die, because, you know, once the body dies, then the demons are free to leave. Now, see, some demons are bound within bodies. They can't leave. That's why we cast them out. Now, some want to leave, believe it or not. They can't stand being there because they're, so they're grunt workers. They're being abused by the, the, the upper echelon. They're, they're in there being tormented themselves. See, don't think demons like each other. They, don't, they can't stand each other. I don't even think they can even stand themselves. And, and so they're criminally insane. They're psychopaths. And and so when it comes to demonization, and and by the way, I, I discuss that in detail in Hoodoo Voodoo and Second Heaven Invasion, uh, the same chapter, discussing demonization versus possession. And there is a difference. 
But I, I want to tell you that anyone that commits sin is is giving food to demons. I don't care whether you're a Christian or not. Now, it doesn't mean that every sin is going to open a door to a demon. But if if you continue practicing such things, then it will open a door. So you have to be repentive. You have to, to, to guard your heart so you don't get angry. You need to forgive. You need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive God. Remember, God's not the problem here. Satan is. And our flesh is an issue. So when I work with people that that want to want me to fix them, I find out that they're really not willing to change. And so I'm just wasting my time. You need to repent. When you repent, you break the legal right to the demons. Okay? And so when God says that we're to pray for our enemies, then it is as if you're pouring hot coals or ashes on their heads okay and i know that's hard to do but again that's why we come back into the spirit we're to walk in the spirit we're to take every thought captive okay we're to to not be a clanging symbol we're to show love and and that's very important and again if you lose your life well you know what that sounds like a lottery ticket win to me to be with your father, ooh, you know, that's a win-win. And so when when you have fear, that's also an entry for demons. If you have fear, it may be, quote, a fear demon, which may have come in because of the abuse that happened to you as a child. All right, let me, let me get back to, to this here. I want to make sure that you understand what's going on here. When, when we talk about you know, again, setting aside anything that takes place in high school, setting aside anything that takes place with uh, uh, crime syndicates uh, and, and drug lords and things like that, that that many of the people that have been dealing with uh, gang stalking have had microwave, have had laser, have had other types of weapons, electronic means, affect them to the point that they've had their skin burned, uh, they've had organs damaged, they've had a severe ringing in their ears for such long periods of time that they have sleep deprivation, they have fear, they have hallucinations, they see things, they hear things, uh, they, they have anxieties, they have depression, they have uh, what would be a psychosis, what would be uh, some type of mental breakdown because of the trauma that's being brought upon them. And, and so I want everyone to, to know that you're not crazy. This is happening, and this is a psychological warfare against you. Now, the, so the question is, why were you selected? Why is this happening to you? and not a relative or a neighbor. Well, again, I think if you look back, there'll be some tie where you were working for a senator, you were working for a large corporation, or your spouse was, or you have uh, a spouse, or or you are a, a son and daughter of somebody who was in the military. Okay? The military uh, is willing to, to do horrible things to their own. Because this is not the United States military. What we have today, we have a strategic, careful placement of, of Islam, of Illuminati, of, of foreign governments placed in our military, in the Pentagon, uh, our, our White House, our, our executive branch, our Congress, our senator, the whole thing is, is completely gone. You need to understand that. And again, if you don't comprehend that or, or don't believe that, then you've been listening to CNN, Fox News, and and some of these other communist uh, agenda propaganda garbage. And the church, again, has not been telling you what's been going on. And and again, when I run the numbers and I look at everything. I come to the understanding that this was this was what they intended to do to get into the seminaries, as, as Julie pointed out, where that all came from in the last show. 
that they infiltrated the churches a long time ago to water down the true word of God. That's why all these different Bibles out there. Some of these Bibles, are, they're not even Bibles. They're not the Word of God. They're changed, they're altered to the point that you, you don't really hear what God's saying. And again, what does that do? It takes you out of relationship. If you're really in a relationship, let's say that you have an intimate relationship with a spouse, okay? Few and far between, but it happens. Gee, it really happens. And that means that one that, that you have no fear of what you say. Okay? That means I can say something stupid, okay, and not worry about being judged by the one I'm supposed to be uh in married to. Okay? So I can say something and and and, and what comes back is love. Okay, instead of condemnation or that look. Huh? I got 20 years of marriage. I know what that's all about. I'm even guilty of that myself. And I'm ashamed of it. So anyone that is dealing with situations that that are like this this gang stalking are 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 going to be in a relationship with others like in the church that can't speak their mind. Those who who deal with demonization, those who deal with nightmares, night terrors, uh, visitations, are in a relationship in the church that can speak to somebody without them looking at you like you're nuts. When it is a fact, and it's what the church was called to do, was to lay hands on our brethren, to anoint them, to heal them, to cast out demons. So you can't tell me that the today's church is the real church of God. It is a lie. And I know that you people who listen to this broadcast already know that. And I wish it was different, but it's not. And so we have to deal with it. And what we deal with is then go to God ourselves, which we should do anyways. See, the church wants you to listen to some pompous, you know what, behind the pulpit. He's spineless. He's a coward. He wouldn't tell you the truth for nothing. He's got his own doctrine of demons, and just like Julie pointed out with, you know, the demons that do manifest, they brag about all the doctrines they put in the churches. And every church has got some kind of demonic doctrine. And and what does that equate to? No love. No ability to listen. See, that's one. the other thing about a good marriage. The other spouse is a good listener, right? You can tell them anything. They may not understand it, but, you know, you can tell them anything. But that's not the church today. The church is full of man's doctrine, doctrine of demons, that keeps you out of relationship. When you go to prayer... When you go to your prayer closet, you can talk to your father. You can tell him about the stupid thing you did today. You can tell him about the sin that you did today. And how do you beat that? Because, see, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You're not going to have someone hammer you over the head you may feel conviction, and so that brings in repentance, which then brings in forgiveness. What a relationship. How many marriages have that? Hmm? So those who are dealing with gang stalking, God bless you. Because you're at the end of your rope, you think you're going to go insane. You've been hurt. You've been physically hurt. You've been burned. You've had your brain scrambled. You're having nightmares. You don't know when something else is going to come into your house because you do get visitations. You go to the store, you come back, and things are all moved around. It may even look like there was a theft, but nothing's missing. Just things are, you know, I was I was looking at one where they actually broke into a safe 
in the woman's house, but they didn't take anything. And see, this all causes mental stress. So this is what they're doing to you, is they're causing you, as an experiment, like an MK Ultra mind control, for you to have a breakdown. What is it going to take for you to snap? Now, all of us are different. All of our constitutions are different. You know, I've mentioned before that you can take a certain amount of demons and put them in people and take those same demons and put them in another person. And one person can go through life with just a, you know, yawn and and, uh, stub their toe and, you know, oh, well. And the other person ends up killing themselves because we're all different. And so this is a, a, a way of looking at the numbers to see who is going to kill themselves, who's going to go crazy. Okay, Now, this is sick, because this means innocent people are being terrorized. This means children, because many of the people that are that this is happening to have children, so the children are being terrorized. I was mentioning one time before that I was working with someone that, that, that uh, was hearing voices, and it didn't matter how many demons we cast out or how much healing they got, they still heard voices. And this was before I understood psychotronics. And I know for a fact that they were a, a military brat. And so they had some tie to the military. See, there's always a common thread amongst all of this. So when you deal with situations that are beyond your control, and, and nothing's worse than not having control. It's a terrible feeling. But see, this is this is sometimes what God allows so we then surrender to him. We pick up our cross. We lay it at the cross for him. That's how important this is. So so the bottom line of, of what I'm talking about here is let's surrender it to God. Let's give this to him because this gang stalking is only the tip of the iceberg. There's more coming. There's going to be false flags. There's going to be home invasions. There's going to be uh, uh, infiltrations of cities, of small towns that are going to be taken over. There's going to be large groups of people that are going to be missing like children. There's going to be schools where a whole classroom will disappear. There's going to be uh, alien-type visitations that that are there to cause us uh, like a false flag, to surrender ourselves to the government. Okay? If anyone's been following all this, they know what I'm talking about. Project Bluebeam, we talked about that, and Julie has some information on that. I've, I've discussed that in, in uh, Second Heaven Invasion. That when you visually see something, and you blink your eyes to, and pinch yourself, and it's still there... Uh, the amount of fear and trauma that it can bring in, if it's something really horrendous, if it's something that is beyond uh, you know, your comprehension where your mind can't even wrap around it, see, at that very moment in time is when a demon can slip in. So when we see that men's hearts will fail them for fear, for those things coming upon the earth, remember, we have not been given a spirit of fear. So where's the fear come from? It's going to be a mass demonization. Okay, do you understand what I just said? This is why it's important for us to be in Christ. This is why it's important for us to be to to have had deliverance. And and I wanted to mention to everyone too, um just be patient with me. I'm trying to get to everyone as much as possible. I dealt with so many cases yesterday I burned myself out. I kind of slacked off a little bit today just so I can get my composure again and I'll pick it up tomorrow. Um, and 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 I'm not the best on on dialects and languages, so forgive me if I didn't understand something, <laughs> and uh, and and or can't get someone's name down. Um, that's not my forte, and Skype isn't the best sometimes. So please forgive me if I don't have everything correct. But that's why we have forgiveness, right? And that's why we do it again. We don't give up. We don't let the devil win. We run the good race, and that is what we're called to do. Now, I've got a lot more that I want to go through, but I want to go ahead and bring uh, Julie in. 
Um, she's been listening, and so I'm sure she's been taking some notes and has some things to say. And so, Julie, um, what do you think about all this? <clears throat> yeah, I actually saw a video this week um, that was sent to me about... Uh, you're, you're a little bit low. You might bring it up. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. I want. I was. I was able to view a video that was sent to me this week, and it had something. If that's what it was about, it was about people who are being gang stalked by. It wasn't just. Um, it was. It was targeted mind control and whatever these these um, mechanical things are. I don't know. I mean, you know more about that with the waves. They they were talking about uh, being able to control someone's thoughts. And through the pineal gland, actually being able to render that inoperable so that you can't, they realize that MK, MK Ultra realizes that you, you can't, in all these government experience, that you can't completely take over someone's mind um, unless they are spiritually dead. So what had happened is they did a lot of testing on these people's brains. And what they found was, and I, okay, the Christians, all of you Christians out there are going to go, woohoo. But what they found was that the people who had a belief in God, who had the, a very strong belief in, in the Lord and um, had that, that uh, spiritual uh, belief system, their brain were, their brain, the whole brain operated at a higher function than people who did not. And they actually were able to grasp different concepts in a way that people who had no, that part of their brain, that, that activity center, was dead. They had no, they don't have any beliefs. They were atheists or whatever. Their brain did not, uh, the same amount of activity wasn't conducted even in other parts of the brain. So what they learned was this, this pineal gland has has a lot to do with the spirit communication. So what they tried to do, and they realized that demons, if a demon possesses someone, a demon can run that body and actually runs it better if the person is spiritually dead. They can have their way with them. They can do whatever they want since you're connected with uh, the Holy Spirit. You know, what happens is that person can't... Um, they can't be completely controlled. And so they, what they see is that, that pineal gland, that area of the brain becomes extremely activated. And then they see from that, when, let's say when they're praying or whatever, from that, other parts of the brain start, you start to see a whole lot of activity going on. Then they actually said that a lot of these people with this, and I can tell you, we'll, we'll, we can pretty much guarantee who it is, but there were certain groups of people who believed in Jesus Christ. That was their connection, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. They believed in that. There were some people that believed in um, Buddha or whatever, you know, and Hindu and whatever. But what they found was that the people who believed in Jesus Christ, who professed that when they were doing these experiments, is that their brain activity would actually increase but there were certain concepts that these people, if they took tests, they couldn't, they couldn't understand. They couldn't access certain things. They weren't as intelligent in certain areas. So I was interested, okay, what areas were they that they weren't as intelligent? Because I believe in Jesus, and I think I'm pretty smart, you know. So I went to go kind of see. And it was so funny because all the areas they were talking about were pinpointed into... Um, a secular atheistic society of science. So, actually, I think the Holy Spirit is keeping you from learning, being able to completely understand the this this science and physics and the things that are explained in a secular viewpoint from an atheist position. They they didn't they didn't score real high in those areas of testing. So that kind of told me that. God kind of has some control over your brain. You, but but why, what, what you believe and what you filled your brain with, what you've decided that's right and wrong, you actually um, 
ended up, you know, receiving the Holy Spirit, and that changed your very thinking to the point that you just don't get what they believe. They can show you, you know, you can be a quantum, you know, physicist. You're looking at all this stuff, but you're, re- and you can, you guys can all do this for yourself. Sit back and think, okay, if I see quantum physics in the quantum vacuum, and I'm, and I'm looking at no thing, nothing, the, the earth was created from no thing. This is what the, these people believe. It was just created from nothing. Well, come from no thing, nothing. But see, they, they, they will go into all this explanation and to you, believing in Jesus Christ, you're going to sit there and you're in your mind, you're just rolling your eyes going, that makes absolutely no sense. And I'm sure you guys have watched, all of you have been, either you've spoken to someone or you've watched videos about this and, you, and you're getting it from a secular scientist, an atheistic scientist or evolutionary scientist, and it may, everything they say is like wah, 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 wah. You don't understand anything they're saying. Because what they're explaining to you has nothing to do with your paradigm. You believe Jesus Christ created the earth. God created the earth. So when they're talking about this quantum vacuum and all this stuff, you're looking at them going, you guys are nuts. Where are you getting all this? So that's the kind of research that they were doing. Well, what they realized when they were doing this is the people who had this this spiritual connection and in particular believed in Jesus Christ could not be influenced in certain directions. They there was there was this uh this wall that was keeping them from being completely taken over. They they couldn't get them to accomplish the things they were doing through mind control. So what Satan what the government, or this is all through him, have realized is if they want to control all of society, first of all, they do have to kill the Christians because um, the Holy Spirit is protecting them from being completely consumed by these mind control techniques, and that's why they want to get rid of the Christians. You notice they don't want to get rid of the Hindus or the Buddhists or the, you know, the, the Islamic jihadist terrorists. That's, they're not worried about those, just the Christians which I found really odd before I was a Christian. I'm like, how come you guys only talk bad about those people? You never talk bad about Buddhists, but you always talk bad about the Christians. I always thought that was, you know, that was another reason that I did start investigating Jesus. But anyway, I digress. Um, the, the The thing that got me was that these people were praying. What they did was they said, okay, like Scott said, people in the military, they would use their kids as as like uh, experimental lab rats, only now they don't even have to have a lab anymore. They can actually, they have technology, they can actually point something at you. It could be, it could look like a, there's one that actually looks like a, it, it almost looks like a gun, and it, and it actually puts out this, some kind of a, a little wave, of, or some kind of electromagnetic wave, and they can shoot it straight at a person and hit their chest or whatever, and they'll go into a heart attack and die. Kill you now without even getting close to you. And so they learned that through these little mechanisms, they could actually control people. The more demonized you are, the easier it was for them to control that person's thinking. So when I started doing the research, what really floored me was when they want to put the mark which is going to be a chip of some kind or something. It's going to be something that will go in and alter. You will no longer be able to hear the Holy Spirit, even if you're not saved, but you couldn't, you w- there's no way that you could ever be redeemed because this, what this is going to do is it's actually going to render your pineal gland inoperable. And you literally would be controlled by the Internet. The Internet is there is the mother, that's the mothership that will control all the clones and will control the people who have, take the mark. That's, that is, the, that is, and if you look that up, start researching it, you'll see how they're going to do it. It was amazing to me to find out. Then I started going back and looking, okay, they put, what do they put in your water? Fluoride. Fluoride kills the pineal gland, literally renders it disabled. Then you start looking at the chemicals on food. 
same thing. It messes up your entire endocrine system, your uh, hypothalamus, all of your, all of your, uh, the, um, the glands in your body that you need that. It's all made for you to spiritually connect with your father. Dopamine is actually comes in quite handy when you are speaking to your father, the pineal gland is working, um, any of that, when that is being exercised, the pineal gland, it, it uh, produces dopamine, okay? That's something that makes you feel really good. So you wonder why when you pray and you get in the spirit and you're really praying in the spirit and praying, you wonder why you feel so awesome? That's because that's the way God made you. To connect with your father was supposed to make you feel great. You're supposed to, and that is his way of connecting. So what they're doing is they're taking these people, and, and this is what makes me the, the, the most angry, is um, it's always someone that's just like a little, it seems like they're always widows or they're single older women, and Scott can tell you. There are men, though. I, have, I did actually see several accounts of men. But when you're sitting on the U.S. side of the border and these evil, slimy, snake, whatever are are pointing their project blue beam across the border into these Mexican people, these poor peasants in their shacks and they are and, and they are paralyzing them with this blue beam and they are having a van and say, Okay, they're 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 paralyzed and then the van gets the transmission, they go in and then they scoop them all up, take them wherever, put a chip in their head, all of them, and then take them and return them back to their house and then they start doing all this testing to see how far they can push him. And what they're doing is if these people won't commit a crime, they'll command them to go and commit a murder. And if they won't do it, that, that, that thought comes in their mind. This is what they said. Tell them we're going to kill you if you don't do it. We're going to torture you so bad right now. And they, they will actually, people have actually went, no, I'm not going to do it. And then all of a sudden the torture and the pain and the mind, and they, they actually have where these horrible entities are coming after them in their brain. And these people, like, you know, they just completely freak out and go into psych-out mode, and they think that there's these things chasing them, and they're running, and they're completely crazy. This is what the government is doing. And, you know, isn't it amazing? Don't you guys find it kind of amazing that they're pointing it across the border to the peasants? The people who have, like, no money, like, most of them don't even have shoes. To me, if, as a Christian, as someone who loves Jesus, I don't want to see anybody have that happen to them. But uh, you guys all know, if you listen to us, that I have, I grew up in Mexico. And it, it absolutely infuriates me because I am very close to, I understand, these people have Nothing. Nothing. They live in, I mean, some of these people that I, we were such good friends with, they lived in shacks. And these people have no way to defend themselves. They have no weapons. Because guns are illegal, okay, in Mexico. So they have no weapons. They have no way to defend themselves. And, they, and, and most of the time when they go to the, um, the police, they, they, they don't even believe them. They think they're crazy. So thank, thankfully there is a police chief in Ciudad Juarez now that actually has had so many of these people come to him and tell the same story that now he's actually looking into investigating. He's actually investigating, and he's very upset about it, and he's speaking out now publicly about it. But this is what they're doing, and pretty soon what they said was there would be enough waves. Now, Scott, you know more about that, but what they're trying to do is, I guess it's called how I would say in layman's terms, clog the air. And they've learned how to, in some type of radio wave system or waves, I don't know exactly what they are, they've learned how to clog the airway. And what they're doing is interfering with people who do speak to God. They're interfering with that communication. And they know it. But you don't know it. You just know that sometimes you wonder if God's even hearing you. We know he's omnipresent. But sometimes you just wonder what's going And then for no reason, you'll just have a headache or you won't be sleeping well or, you know, and rather than it being demonic issues, it's, it's your smart meter. It's the government. They have targeted individuals. 
And if you listen to some of these people, one of the ladies that Scott and I both have um, prayed for and, and everything, she's an older lady and she's alone. And this govern- these government entities, actually, they killed her husband. She's convinced they killed him. And I believe her. And she is targeted day and night. She moves out of state and leaves and goes way, way, way away from where she was at. States and states and states away. And she moves. And guess what? Right behind her, the house behind her, these people that live behind her, all of a sudden when she starts to see who they are, then they, their behavior toward her becomes extremely ominous. And now they're doing things that make her believe and know that they actually might be part of the program. And everywhere these people go, they can look and see the same people standing across the street watching them. Uh, at their neighbors, they'll think that their neighbor is whoever, and what they'll start to see is that maybe those people move and someone else moves in, and that's the same person that had been following them in the state they used to live in. And now they're there. And they are being targeted spiritually like these radio waves and microwaves and all these things literally targeted in their own homes. They can't sleep. They can't eat. They're absolutely at suicide. Is just the only, that they get to the point where that's the only thing they can think about is killing themselves. And this, this whole scenario is so real. And some, you know, one, uh, there's been a few times that we've gotten certain letters and, I'm, and, I, and I tell Scott, is that for real? Did you, my God in heaven, what's going on? She's either crazy and psychotic or some, this is crazy. And as it turns out, once we start talking to them and, and what have you, that one person actually sued someone who had a government connection and won. And uh, so the harassment began. And she's still living like that. And so this is, it's all real, but if you were to hear someone tell you this story, especially when you're reading it in an email, you just sit back and go, this can't be happening. I mean, this is like a bad sci-fi movie. And there's drones following this woman around, and sure enough, there are drones. And she goes outside of her house and videotapes stuff, weird things in the air. And you just start to see that there there's a massive, massive government program going on that are targeting people, and they're using them as guinea pigs to study what they will and won't do and how far they can push someone. And if they kill themselves, they don't care, you know. And if you won't cooperate, they'll kill your husband or kill your wife or kill your kids, you know. And then they'll let you know they did it through mind control, through your mind, and then say, okay, if you don't do what we say, your other kid's next. And this is the kind of stuff they're doing. And so, but you're right, Scott. I mean, I was completely amazed because when I started reading and I, you know, one of my Mexican correspondents was telling me about these people in Ciudad Juarez, I was completely in shock because I know people that live out there in those little shanties. You know, we used to take clothing across the border to all these people and, and, and things that are hard for them to get that cost a lot in their country, like paper towels, paper goods, you know, things like that. We would get cheaper in the United States and take it across the border. And we, I mean, these stories that, that are coming out of um, Ciudad Aquatis right now is absolutely, I mean, it makes me just want to choke whoever's doing it because these these are peasant poor people that have no they can barely afford to even get a, a food on a, you know, some food. They have to get their food by the day because they have no electricity, they have no running water. So they have to only just get enough to survive every day and because they, they can't keep food overnight and if it needs refrigeration. So this is the kind of stuff these people are living like. And here you have our government going in and preying upon these people. And um, and especially they're dealing with a lot of children in Mexico because they're like the forgotten children, you know. And so they're going in with these mind control techniques. But this is what's coming. They're gonna. The only reason that it won't work on the Christians or someone, I should say, Christians is a loose term, but people who are connected to Jesus, people who have the Holy Spirit, and not the low light Christians. We hear a lot about that, but what that means is, is as far as my uh, war, uh, being in the occult and understanding from that point of view, 
is there are people who have the Holy Spirit, but they don't have a close relationship with God. They don't exercise that every day. They don't, um, they were the people that were kind of in, but they don't, they don't utilize that pineal gland, so to speak. They don't have that thing working, working, working all the time. You know, that keep that connection really strong and bright. And so we would call those the low light. And so the demons didn't mess with them because they're no threat. It was the bright light Christians. That's who the demons want to go after. And that's the people that have a serious connection with God. There's something to do with this uh, pineal gland and the 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 prayer life and the, the life they live, the obedience to God. All of that strengthens their light and their connection. So that would be who the demons would try to derail because they knew those are the ones that can do the most damage to their kingdom. And we, I mean, you know, one time a demon was screaming, I, you know, just, you've damaged my kingdom, you've, you've completely ruined my kingdom, you, you've sent so many of them, we can't find them anymore. When they come here, they were getting, people were getting delivered. We don't even know where they are anymore. Like they would send them, they would cast the demons out. And the demon was going, the demon, they, they would say, they're, 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 we don't even know what happened to them. You cast them out, and now they're gone. We can't find them anymore. So my kingdom is wrecked, and I have, my kingdom is gone, and I, you know, and this is the stuff that these, this demon was, I said there were several of them that were furious about it. So we know that they go after the Christians, the people who have that strong, you know, the connection to God, and especially they really hate people in deliverance because from everything that we've learned and from what I knew from the, being on the other side, the people who do deliverance, um, like I tell people that I minister to, everyone who is a, 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 a you know, a, a worshiper of God, of Jesus Christ, everyone should be able to do deliverance. You should be able to cast out demons, you have been given that as a, um, like an inheritance. But when you don't practice that and learn what what is happening in the spirit realm, what's happening when that when you speak, people will get hit really hard after they try to start, when they start learning to do deliverance and understanding the spirit realm, they'll get hit really hard and they'll quit. Because I guess they think that we don't ever have anything attack us. But I think God lets certain things happen to see what your resolve is. And that's what he was saying earlier. You can have a certain amount of demons in one person and it just built, they want to kill themselves. It's driving them up, you know, to suicide. And the other person can have the same layering and they don't even care. It's just a minor nuisance. So I think that a lot of people should be doing it, but... A lot of people should understand what they're doing before they do it. And once you understand that, and and I also talked about power and authority. You know, we're given power, but authority comes, we don't all have the same authority. And I'll tell you why. When you're walking in obedience to God, and then you speak in the spirit realm, you got some authority. But when you're walking in disobedience and living a disobedient life, the demons know that, and they laugh at your authority. So somebody says, well, how come I tell the demons to go and they don't go? And I say, well, because when you walk with authority, that's when you you, you see your life, you pick up your cross, and you live in obedience. You don't live in a disobedient life. You are You are actually doing every day everything you can think of that you're supposed to do. How do you treat your spouse? How do you take care of your children? Um, how do you, do you minister to people? Do you, you know, and, and when you do this, you're, the authority level that you have is increased, and the demons will flee when you say, because look at Satan, he still has power. Power just like he did when he was with God. He, is still, he still has power. But does he have authority? No. When he walked next to God, he had a lot of authority. He was in charge of thousands and millions of angels. I mean, he was he was the right-hand guy. What happened? He fell 
and now his authority is nothing. He has no more authority. He he has the authority over some people that want to follow him. That's it. He's lost all his all of that authority he had because he fell from from grace. So when we are walking in obedience to God, the closer and the more obedient we are, the more authority we have. Because I've I've had people tell me that they've tried to cast out demons and the demons are laughing at them and calling them names. And they're like, "Well, how can that be?" Well, what are you how are you living? I mean, if you're walking in complete disobedience to the Lord, do you really think that they see you with any authority? They they think it's they they think you're a joke. So that's what we have to remember, and that goes back to the control of your mind by the government. Because if you're walking in obedience with the Lord God, and and you are picking up your cross every day, these these means that they have to control you, when that pineal gland is well, that connection is well formed to your heavenly Father, they can't do it, and that's what's making them mad because they're trying to see how far they can go. And they're trying to see who they can do it to and how they can influence them. And they're having a lot of problems with these, uh, what we call in the occult, the bright light Christians. They're having a lot of problems with those people. So just remember whenever you hear about these things that are coming upon the earth and these things are going to happen, if you have a tight relationship with your Father in heaven, then you can you can be still and know that, that uh, he's got your back and he's... Pr- protecting that communication line that you have with them. So, and Scott, didn't you say something about the um the the people that are being targeted that they're being followed by drones and things? Yeah, there's um quite a few that I have talked to that uh, have had that. <clears throat> I think even Quail himself has had that issue. You know, uh, the, some of the information about uh, gang stalking, I've been able to go back as far as 1990. And around 2001, Michigan uh, actually recognized gang stalking and started passing laws. But again, um, what Julie was talking about, the pineal gland, when you're in Christ, then the the demons, you know, if you've repented, you've been delivered, See, then, then they can't get to you. So what they're trying to do here is they're looking at through electronic means, cyclotronics, using nanotechnology. And remember that some of the chips that they've developed can actually be put in vaccines now, okay? So GPS uh, tracking chips under nanotechnology can actually be in vaccines. So that means that the ability to monitor your bio can be done the the same way. And so by terrorizing you, then they're able to monitor what how you're reacting and they're able to see what works and what doesn't. So through again psychotronics that you know a co- a covert harassment is really what this is to cause paranoia. Uh this can come from satanists. This can come from those that are SRA, satanic ritually abused through paid criminals. Uh, through agents of other countries. Uh, we even have FBI, CIA, U.S. Marshals Office, and even Interpol can be involved in such things. And and so when you use electronic means, you can use drones. Now, drones is a term that we think about the uh, the children's toys that are now available, or we think about the large military craft that are used to take out, uh, you know, insurgents. And so it's quite a wide spectrum, but some of you forget about that some drones are actually like uh, insects. Some drones are like birds. And so they can go into areas and see things uh, and monitor that, you know, a larger drone could not do because of nanotechnology. See, I entered the semiconductor industry in 1983, okay? I came in as a technician. I worked on uh, the 64K memory chip. Many of you probably remember the Commodore 64. And at that time, the facility that I worked in in Mesa, Arizona, uh, was the state of the art. When I walked in, it was like walking into a spaceship. We wore bunny suits. I wore that bunny suit for 20 years. 
can't even imagine that, but I did. And so that um, that technology, micro, that was micro technology, was a big deal. And it wasn't until probably about the 90s that we started hearing about uh, nanotechnology, which was still in the research labs. But in reality, the globalists had this long before because they have all this technology uh, <clears throat> that is angelic, that is fallen angel technology that they've been utilizing for a very, very long time. And that technology only trickles down to us 20, 30, 40, 60 years later. And so what has been out there has been far advanced beyond our comprehension. And so it's hard for a lot of us to, to, um, to come to terms with that because we've been in the dark for so long, we can't even comprehend it, okay? But in reality, it's been there in their hands, and they've been using it all along. So this means that microwave, ultrasonic, subsonic, uh, through, the, again, the psychotronics, that whether it's the pineal gland or whether it's the frontal lobe, whether it's uh, the visual parts of the brain, uh, that they can control, they can manipulate, they can put in visions, they can put in uh, hearing voices, or they can cause you to do things you wouldn't normally do. It's been around a very long time. And just like uh, Julie was saying, that they're targeting those south of the border as experiments. They don't care what happens to them. They don't care. Well, they're they're actually hoping that insanity will come and that there'll be mass murder. You, you do realize, people, there are weapons that will do that, that can actually cause us to turn on each other. There will be such, dist such distraught within our soul, within our spirit, that that will happen. Now, the only way they can do that, obviously, if you're in Christ, and we have the Holy Spirit, what are they trying to do? They're trying to circumvent the Holy Spirit. They're trying to get around it so they can cause us as Christians... Now, if you have sin in your life and you have demons and you have uh, not repented, you have strong sin that you brought into your walk with Christ, these demons are going to be in cooperation with this whole end times uh, beast system. And you're going to find that, that it's a little too late that now you can't come out of the situation that you've now been brought into. Now there is a, a mass stampede across the border of ISIS and all these other uh, groups. Uh, the troops here in America that are have boots on the ground are being activated. And now all of a sudden, we can't fight. We have fear. We have trembling. We have depression. Uh, we have apathy. We don't care. Uh, and and then we turn on each other. That is the tactic that they're doing. See, a house divided cannot stand. And so to come into a person's spirit, to come into their will, because remember, we're, we're a free will. So if they can manipulate and control you to keep you in sin, then this is another way to circumvent the Holy Spirit. If you are in Christ, what they're trying to do is to come to you through electronic means. Okay, so again, this is why it is important to have a relationship with the Most High God, the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, not the God of NIV. And to understand that it is Him, it is He, it is the blood of Christ that is going to pull you through this. Okay, I believe that God is going to pour out His Spirit, as He said. And that means that those who would have normally been attacked, those who would have normally have caved in, are not going to. Now, I can't even imagine how many thousands and thousands of Christians that have already perished from the insanity, insanity that comes from psychotronics. This nanotechnology, this microwave, this ultrasonic, this subsonic, the FM, AM, subcarrier, uh, Anything that they do through electronic means to cause insanity, to, to, to have you hear voices. And, and by the way, we hear this all the time uh, on the news. We see mothers who kill their children. 
Um, I can remember, I don't know, maybe it's already been a year now, where this woman was told through voices to to hold one of the children underneath the water, and she sat on him until, until, he, until he drowned. I mean, come on, people. That is not the nature of a, of a woman. That is not the nature of a mother. That is that is demonic. That is that is a that's demonic bullying on the human population. And for again those who are in Christ Jesus, they're trying to do everything they can through other means to come after us. Just like when you have a family and you have a man who truly is godly. Okay, he's doing what he's called to do. And the demons can't get to him. He doesn't look at pornography. He doesn't look at other women. He doesn't drink. He doesn't carouse. He's in the Word. He prays. So what are the demons going to do? They're going to find the weakest link. They're going to go after the wife, and they're going to go after the children. Okay? And, And unfortunately, it works. Not all the time, but it does work. Okay? There may be those who have generational sin. Maybe you've married somebody, you know, like you, you, you came from a family that um, was, in, in all intents purposes, a God-fearing uh, family. And now you married somebody that uh, you don't really know anything about them. They didn't tell you the truth. And now you're in relationship with somebody that's got some really bad curses. And now your kids are all screwed up. Drugs, homosexuality, theft, lying, you name it. And and you're going, what in the world? Well, that's because the curse came down through the other bloodline, through the other part of the family tree. And so those need to be broken, those need to be removed. And so by keeping deliverance out of the churches and not teaching it to the people has put us all at risk. And here we are today with millions of Christians, people who truly are God-fearing, who are struggling, who are hurt, who are wounded. Because remember, God was very adamant about guarding our hearts. And and when you receive a wound to your heart, hurting people hurt people. It can also come to the point that you make a willful decision to walk away from God. Because that's really what, what what's trying to take place here. Satan wants you out of relationship with, with God. And and so when we when we talk about gang stalking, when we talk about programming when we talk about uh, vaccines and chemtrails chem you know spraying uh, gmo foods see this is all part of the end times we're here that's that's my point there is no turning back we have somebody in the white house who who i have absolutely no idea if he's even human or not i have reason to believe that he's some fabricated uh, piece of junk but he's he's doing a darn good job of what he's been told to do. And that's because of our Congress, the House, the Senate. That whole executive branch has been completely taken over. And so a few people, compared to the masses, is coming after God's people. Because as Julie said, when we're removed, when we're out of the way, there is no one else to pray for the rest. Okay, does that make sense? See, when we're told to stand against the wiles of the enemy, when we're told to corporately pray, to pulling down our strongholds, stand against the principalities of the air, and we don't do it, then that means Satan has a free reign. Okay? So when when you go into, uh, let's say, um, you know, self-defense, Okay. When when I went through martial arts as a young child, I stayed in it for a very, very long time and ended up being a professional. I did my last two years as a professional, was paid for what I did. And that was a long time ago. And I had to repent of the divination, by the way. Anyone who's in martial arts, anybody that does that, there are things that attach to you and you need to get rid of it. Okay, just like I did. It was very powerful, very strong. 
because I it became a part of me. But the but the training that you get in defending yourself is very crucial when you realize that if there's more than one person, that usually somebody's in charge, and or one is bigger, and if you go after that big one and you take them down, the others may fall. The others may back back off. Okay, and and so when when you stand your ground against demons, and you say, "I am a child of the Most High God." I have been bought with the price of the blood of Jesus. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. And I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is a salvation for everyone who believes. Believe me, there is a, a alteration, a change in the spirit realm. Okay? Now, if just like Julie said, though, that there are people, and I deal with it all the time, and those who come to me, are being terrorized by demons. And what's going on is that you don't know who you are in Christ. Okay? They've lied to you, and now you, you, you've you become kind of milk toast. And, and it's nothing against you, because I was there myself. See, I had to learn. And, and when you repent, and you get rid of the demons, you get stronger. Until you finally get to a point where you can stand on your own feet, and then the demons must obey you. Okay? But until that takes place, just like she said, they'll laugh at you. Man, they think you're they think you're a joke. And and you know what? How sad that is. Because you see, that means that what Jesus did, and that it, that at that point in time where you're at, it's almost in vain. Do you, do you understand what I just said? Because, see, Jesus came to willfully sacrifice himself, to shed his blood, to pay for our sins. And so all sins, past, present, and future, are paid for. Okay, remember that now. So there's no reason to have shame and guilt when you repent. And when you repent, you break the legal right of the demons. And then... You ask for forgiveness, you forgive others, you continue to break legal rights, you continue to break those strongholds, you close the doors, you break the generational curses, and now demons don't have a legal right to you. But unfortunately, a lot of you don't cast the demons out. So now you say, well, i got things still going on in my house, but I repented. Well, you didn't cast them out. you got shadow people, you got, you know... uh, you know, your spouse is being uh, terrorized because they didn't repent. You did. And that's the... Let me bring that up now. i got to bring this up. You know, I'm not a marriage counselor. And, and, and I certainly won't turn anyone away. But there is nothing more frustrating than a couple that comes to me and one will and one won't. So let's say, ladies, that your your husband basically is a nincompoop, okay? And he doesn't think that he needs to repent. He doesn't think that he has sins. Do you know what he's doing to your family? Do you know what he's doing to your kids? Your kids are terrorized. They're having nightmares. They're dealing with things that they shouldn't have to deal with because your husband is not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Okay? Why? Grace. No, 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 no. Not the grace that God gave us. The greasy grace that the church has taught us. Thinking that I don't need to repent. It's already taken care of. Don't need to do it. Mm-mm. No, I'm good. Hey, I'm going to go get me a tattoo. Don't worry about that uh, thing I looked on the internet last night, honey. It's okay. No, I'm sorry it's not. You see, the sins are passed down to the generations. Now, of course, it says the third and fourth, but believe me, one and two could follow right in there. And by the way, it's most like an iniquitous situation because your ancestors had the sin. And so now your kids are paying the price because basically you're a moron. And and I'm sorry. 
And and I got to say this because if I don't say it, your kids are going to suffer. So you need to bang your fist on the table and say, spouse, wake up. You're supposed to be the man of the home. You're supposed to protect us. Look, your daughter's having nightmares. Your son's having weird thoughts about other boys. And what's going to happen when we're invaded? What's going to happen when ISIS comes over that border? What's going to happen when the boots on the ground are given the order to start going house to house? And your husband is not in in Christ? Your husband has not repented? Okay, so let's reverse this now. Okay, ladies? All right, so now you've got a godly man, a God-fearing man. You don't hear that in politicians anymore, do you? Mm -mm. But uh, you walk out the door and you got your best boobs on, okay? you got a, a skirt so short that you need to powder two more cheeks. You think that's honoring God? You think your husband feels safe and good about you going out the door like that? See, your nakedness is for your husband, and that includes the top and the bottom. And whenever you do this, you then cause other males to lust. You cause them to fornicate within their spirit, and you cause them to have demons. And there will be accountability for that. We're not to cause our brother to stumble. All right? So now we got somebody who's dealing with sex addictions, who's really trying to work hard. And here you're bouncing around, or or you're flirtatious, or whatever the deal is. See, it goes both ways. I'm just frustrated because married couples are are really a challenge because one's good and one's not. And because the one's not, the good ones suffer. And it, it is so heartbreaking because the kids are eventually the ones who pay for all this. And so when we see women, especially, I'm going to change, you know, turn the turn it around here. When we see women who are the only ones going to church, I can assure you that the devil's in the details. And unfortunately, the church you're going to isn't listening to you anyways. They're counseling you, but they're not telling you what's really going on. And and by the way, the, 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 the cutesy little prayers, you know, well, well, don't Scott? Don't you just have a prayer for me? No, you got demons. I need to come in with a baseball bat and start pounding heads. Okay, you got sin you brought in from you know from your past life, and you haven't repented of it yet, or you haven't had the the curses broke off. And and a cutesy little prayer is why the demons are laughing now. Understand what I'm saying here. There are times that we go before the Lord with prayers. Absolutely. But there are times we roll our sleeves up and He expects us to be the ones to do the swinging. And if you could see into the spirit realm and see what these foul things are doing to your children and to your spouse, gentlemen, because many many women are sexually violated. Many have have uh, incubus spirits, and 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 men can have succubus that come to them, and and it's terrible. In, in fact, there's a, a a separation in marriage where sex is no longer taking place within a marriage, and and by the way, that's that's a gift. And when that's not taking place. Okay, then the oneness of one flesh is interrupted. And now the devil slips in. Okay? So so I want everyone to understand that whether it's through 
sexuality, whether it's through movies, whether it's through the Internet, whether it's through bad doctrine in church, gang stalking, we're under really, really heavy attack. And there are so many demons in such strategic locations in your life that if you truly knew what was going on, since the church failed to tell you, you don't. And, and, and thank God that most of you who do listen to this broadcast actually do. And I, and I know this from the emails. And, and God love you people, man. I, I know you're hurting. I know you're suffering, man. I was there myself. And there's nothing worse than, than emotional mental torment. And, and the very fact that that can even take place really irks me. And I get really fed up. And I get really tired of seeing the same thing over and over again. And, and, it's, and it's especially hard to see the, the same person fall back into their sins, return back to their vomit. And, and, and when that takes place, if you truly fought for a time, sometimes the demons really come back hard. And, and you know, the laws were put in place, and I'm talking about the laws of America or governments. I'm talking about the law of Moses, the prophet, laws of the prophet, those things in the Old Testament, and then Jesus fulfilled them. Those were there to keep sin out of our life so demons could not have a legal right to us. And and now, since we're having the beast system come into place and the church has stood down, you see the strategics in that? Notice that, that around the turn of the century, how the Illuminati infiltrated the, the seminaries, and then now, the, now here we are, without the truth being told to us. And we've got this massive wave that's going to come at us, and, and so few of us are capable of standing against the wiles of the enemy. See, this wasn't by accident. This was intentionally put in place to circumvent the Holy Spirit. Okay? And, and believe me, God wishes none should perish. When, when we have the ability to research, to get the truth, and we're not getting it, then we have to look at why are we not getting it. And that is to keep us ignorant. Ignorant about God. Ignorant about the Holy Spirit. Ignorant about deliverance. Okay, doesn't mean we're stupid. It just means we don't know. So, again, when, when you go to church, or, oh, by the way, speaking of church, hey, Rick Warren, how you doing? Hmm? Mr. Council of Foreign Relations, the man that's bringing in Krizlam, I can assure you, sir, that what you're doing, there will be accountability for what you're doing. I just thought I'd bring that up to you, okay? You want to give me a call and I'll pray for you? I'm open for it. But I'm I'm sure that somewhere you signed on the dotted line to sell to sell us out. I have to bring it up. I'm sorry. I'm gonna shout it from the rooftops. You see, sir? And and I guess I use that loosely. You know, as I, I'm 59 years old, and and like I mentioned, I went into to, uh, to martial arts when I was about 13. I said yes, sir. I said no, sir. I did what I was told. I had respect of my elders. And I can assure you, Mr. Rick Warren, that you are not a gentleman. I do not have respect for you. And and for me, as an adult who was, who was brought up the way that I am, that should say a lot. I will reserve that for those who are truly godly men or those who have a repentant heart. And since you have sold us down the river, 
you have written books that water down the Word of God. And that means that the people that are within your church and those who have believed your garbage have demons. And those demons will terrorize and destroy those people. And that means you will be held accountable for it. Now, while you draw breath, you can repent. But since this is a Luciferian doctrine, I'm going to assume you've sold your soul. Now, again, I think even Hitler, if he repented, could have been saved. And, and who knows? Who knows? But the point of it is, the time is short for all of us. And if we're in churches like Saddleback or, or Willow Creek or whatever these things, man, the people are going to just, their hearts are going to fail for fear for those things coming on the earth. You know, uh, the churches around here, I don't, I don't even go anymore. And, and it's sad. And, and you know what? I'm not forsaking the brethren because you know what? I'm in prayer every day. I'm reading the Bible with other people. I'm in fellowship, okay? How many of you out there can say that? Go to a home Bible study. Do something that can bring the, the, the knowledge and, and, and fellowship where two or more are gathered, okay? So whether it's through electronic means on Skype or, or phone or people come into the office, I'm in fellowship, okay? And, and thank you for those who support my ministry. Believe me, there are, there are people that are, are receiving healing, that are hearing the truth, that are getting their life back together. You know, I, I got a call one time from a guy, a young man. Man, what, it was heartbreaking. He was the last male in the family. Death, murder, accidents, and he had been in a horrible accident. He was the last male. He was terrified. And because I had this office and I had this phone, he had a place to call. He had someone to talk to. He had somebody to pray for. And if he had gone to Saddleback, he'd have got counseling. If he'd gone to Willow Creek, he would have got counseling. He would have got a man's doctrine. Instead, he got the curses broke off of him. He got the demons cast out. He got the curse of accidents broke off. He got the curse of early death broke off of him. And and that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't had the support from you, the people who are listening. It's a big deal. Believe me. It's infectious. And And so we just keep moving forward. This is... This is a time that we have to understand that we need our brethren. We need our brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you're sick and you're wounded and you're depleted and you're ready, at your, at your wit's end, what can you do for others, right? How can you help others when you can't even get out of bed? And so the solution is the blood of Jesus Christ. The solution is repentance. Repentance. The solution is deliverance to remove your demons, to get your heart healed, to, to, to bind up the broken heart, to, to understand who you are in Christ, to understand that God is in control, that we are heirs to the kingdom, that we are to fulfill the Great Commission, and by fulfilling the Great Commission, then other people are going to be healed. And I'll tell you what, thank you those who were in the, the ministry in Scottsdale, Arizona in 2000, 2001, when I crawled through the door after getting my rear end kicked for many, many years by demons, had absolutely no idea what was really going on. Every church I went to was useless psychiatrists, psychologists, counselors, worthless, 
absolutely worthless because I was under demonic attack. And when the individuals within the church that I went to, okay, one of the few churches that had deliverance, saw what was going on, they stood for me, they prayed over me, they they brought me to a point of understanding what things I did wrong that I needed to repent of, and then start casting the demons out, start breaking the curses, start bringing healing to me, and here I am today. And so this is what I'm trying to do for everyone else. So God bless you people. Running out of time. Julie, do you got anything to, to, to finish in just a minute or two? No, I just I, I, I just want to say that what I think what you tackled tonight, the subject that you, you took on was really, um, I received a couple of emails while you were speaking from exactly a couple of listeners that are going through the very thing that you just were talking about, about the being stalked and gang stalked, and they um, were very, they just wanted to say thank you for for bringing attention to this because this is what they're going through, and um, they they want other people to know too because there there might be other people out there that are going through things like that, and they don't know who to call. They don't even and and there may be a a situation where you you really can't change it. I mean you you're not. You're not uh, in a governmental way. You, you might not be able to, you know, uh, bring in the right law enforcement to get it to stop because this makes you coming from a very high place. But at least these people can be prayed for, can learn how to do spiritual warfare, which the people who are sending these these things, this torment, they have demons. So, you know, at least they can pray against those demons and know um, that they do have help. You know, we can go into corporate prayer, prayer and petition corporately to, to for God to intervene on behalf of certain people. So she's one of the one of the people said thank you for addressing this. But um, yeah. anybody out there that's having that problem, you know, just give us a call and at least we could all get together and pray. You know. Yeah. You know. Uh, just to to know that that you're not crazy and that someone understands can bring such healing. Um, you know, because you've gone to people, you've gone to churches, you've tried to tell them about this gang stalking and all these weird things that's happening, entities, uh, drones, uh, uh, burns on your skin, you know, uh, feeling of insanity. And they just look at you like you got two heads. I know all about that. And there's nothing more frustrating because these are supposed to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. And if they had done their homework, if they had been doing what God has called them to do, they would know exactly what to do and that it was a fact and truth and would bring love to you instead of condemnation. So thank you for understanding what we're doing here. All right, Julie, well, we're running out of time. Uh, Again, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we've, we've stepped it up to three shows a week. And I'm pretty close to getting the video portion done where I'll be doing Ustream, live stream, just waiting for some components. And um, and remember that uh, my book, Hoodoo Voodoo, is available. Again, that teaches spiritual warfare and deliverance and talks about the demons and breaking curses and so forth. And you can get that at scotthensford.org. And um, so, again, people just understand that uh, we're in a battle. We're in a war, and and the, the the fact that the church isn't telling us that has really di- did us a disservice. It did me a disservice and put me in a position for years that, um, well, I, I should have been doing this uh, 30 years ago, okay, instead of starting out 15 years ago. So anyways, uh, God bless everyone, and um, and good night.